Happy Halloween guys! Today I'm filming a look with Jack. We are doing a war boy look from Mad Max. This was actually a suggestion from one of my followers who I'm going to put on screen for you now. So say goodbye to Jack's hair because we're going to apply a board cap to make him look like he has a shaved head. I purchased my vinyl ball cap from The Makeup Armoury which is my favourite place for special effects products. I do already have an in-depth tutorial on how to apply a board cap which I'm going to link on screen for you now but I'm just going to leave a little bit of it in there for you so you know how I'm applying it. So I'm applying some witch hazel to the skin to remove any oils before I apply the glue. I'm placing some conditioner into Jack's hair just to allow me to slick it back. You can use gel but I'm just using conditioner. And now Jack's holding the front of the ball cap so I can pull it back over the back of his head. My preference for sticking down a vinyl ball cap is this Prosade adhesive. Again, I got this from the Makeup Armoury. And using a cotton bud, I'm applying that to the forehead, which is where I always start by sticking down the ball cap. Wait for the glue to go completely transparent before you press the ball cap down onto the forehead. To speed up the drying time, you can use a hairdryer on the core setting. Next I always glue at the nape of the neck, that way the ball cap is secure at the front and the back and it's not going anywhere and then I start around the ears. But again, if you want to see how to do this and how to work this around the ears, check out my in-depth tutorial. By the time you've glued it around the front and the back, you should have something that looks like this. So once I've fully secured it around the ears, I then just trim away the ball cap so we have it completely separate. Now it's time to start melting away those edges. Whenever it's Halloween, I always pull out my crystal skull. And this again I got from the Makeup Armoury. I like to put my acetone in it because it makes it extra Halloween-y. And then I use a cotton bud and I use a rolling technique to blend away the edges. So not only does this remove the excess product, but it also blends it into the skin at the same time. So just use a rolling method on those edges and it will blend away to nothing. Not only is a vinyl ball cap super easy to work with compared to other mediums, it really does become absolutely seamless with the skin and for me it's the most realistic effect that you can get when it comes to ball caps. So if Jack is unfortunate enough to go bald early, this is what he's going to look like. The reference image that I'm using of one of the wall boys has a scar across his face and to do this I'm going to use Rigid Collodion. This is such a fantastic product for quick and easy scars. Basically, it puckers the skin, creating a very intense tightening effect. When you're ready to remove it, you can simply peel it away from the skin or use a spirit gum dissolver to remove any residue. I always have a cheap pack of brushes that I pull out at Halloween, ones that can get damaged for using spirit gum or products like this. So this one is a small synthetic one that I'm using so I can be more precise. I'm applying some lines down the lips, almost where the teeth would be. A bit like when you're painting the teeth onto a skull. And these are going to be almost like open wounds combined with looking a bit like a scar at the same time. So because I want them to be relatively deep, I've applied around four layers on each of the scars to really pucker that skin in. And then here I'm just dabbing it on the nose in various areas because the nose on the character looks a little beaten up. So I want the skin on the nose to look a little textured. I would have liked to have applied this scar on the cheek a little higher up, but as I'm always having Jack facing towards the camera, it's a little difficult for me to see. So I should have really marked it out of a pen like I usually would. Anywho, moving on, I'm going in with this product called Sculpt Gel. Again, you can get this from the Makeup Armoury. This is a really good two-part or three-part system where you can create prosthetics straight onto the face without the need for life casting or creating moulds. You just need to mix parts A and B together equally by weight or volume. You can add parts C in if you want more flexibility. So for example, if you were using this on the neck and you needed it to be more flexible, then you'd add in C. But here I'm just mixing together parts A and B equally, and then I'm using my spatula to kind of sculpt this onto the face because he has scars in this area. And then I'm turning my spatula around to use the edge to create some indentations. Then just allow that to go off on the skin before you go in with your products to paint it or color it. This one is the flesh color one. You can also get it in clear. You can also use pigments to color it before you apply it to the skin. This is definitely a staple in my Halloween kit. If you want to see this in action in some other looks, check out my Halloween playlist, especially the Yondu tutorial. To color the skin, I'm gonna use my Super Color Palette by Krylon, which I pull out every single year. I'm using these four shades for this particular look. I'm using two reference images for this particular character. One of them is a bit more grainy, it's been color graded, and the other one is a screenshot from the actual movie and it doesn't look as intense. So I'm doing something in between both of those reference images. 
If you've watched the Mad Max movie, the newer one, you'll know that these characters are extremely pale, so that's the look I'm going for. I'm buffing this onto the skin using my It Cosmetics Heavenly Luxe Complexion Perfection Brush Number 7, and then I'm going to set that in place with some translucent powder. Now, there are a variety of different translucent powders you can use. I just grabbed this one by Laura Mercier because it does have a slightly more skin colour finish. So although we're going for pale, we still want it to resemble a little bit of the skin finish rather than clown white. So the technique that I'm using to cover Jack's hair underneath with the Supra colour is to apply a layer, set it with a powder, apply a second layer and then reset. Then I want to go in and create the look of a shaved head. Now the easiest way for me to do this so that you guys can copy it is to use an easy stipple technique. The brush I'm using is a Dillium Tools Special Effects Small Stippling Brush. The number is 193X. And I'm mixing together two shades from my Toby Sills Post Mortem Palette. I'm mostly using Primer Greg with a tiny amount of dust to dust. And you want to cover the entire head and create your hairline using this. Then the next easiest way to do this is to apply a dark shadow. I'm using the Krylon Madrid Shades palette. All of the eyeshadows in this palette are completely matte and I'm using the darkest shade which is almost like a brown black. And I've taken the Bare Minerals Concealer Brush which is kind of like a duo fiber. It's slightly spiky and I'm using a really light hand to very softly stipple this eyeshadow over the Skin Illustrator color that we laid down. That one is completely waterproof, this one isn't, so you will need to set this with a fixer spray. You can either use the one by Krylon, there's one that's sold at the Makeup Armoury by Green Marble. It's a tough film forming barrier, so then it won't come off. I need to darken Jack's eyebrows, so I'm using the same colour that we used on the top of the head, and I'm going to work that through Jack's brows. We're just keeping them as they are in terms of shape, but we're combing this through. We don't need to worry too much because we are going to be applying some dark colours around the eyes which is going to go into the brow. For that, again, I'm going to be using a cream based product. This is also from the Super Colour palette, however, you can use eyeshadow. I like to use a cream base first because it really does give intensity. I also don't mind that sometimes it kind of warms up and moves a bit. It kind of gives a grungy feel to the eyes which is what we're kind of going for for this look. In terms of the shape that we are creating, you kind of want to think of the eye sockets as you would with a skeleton. So we are going for that kind of rounded shape following the shape of the eye socket. A little tip if you're working on somebody who's not very good at opening their eyes and looking up, like Jack, is get them to keep their eyes closed but actually look up with their eye closed because it will stretch the skin underneath and it will allow you to get closer to the root of the eyelashes. I'm applying this colour with a flat shader brush and this is a dual blended brush so I'm actually flipping it round to do a bit of the blending and I'm flipping it back round to the flat shade when I want to apply the colour. And that's just a little tip for makeup artists because it's a handy tool to have. I've applied that same colour from the eyes onto the nose. The character's nose looks a little bit broken so in order to recreate that kind of flat wider bridge I'm going slightly lower on Jack's bridge of his nose and darkening it which in turn makes the bridge look a little bit wider but also flatter and resembling the character's nose. Again here using a dual blended brush just to press that into the skin. I'm taking that same cream shadow to shade up around the forehead. It makes the forehead look slightly smaller but again also a little bit skeletal. And this is the Filbert brush, also by Dillium Tools. Again, you can get that from the Makeup Armoury. Next, I'm taking a pointed angle brush by Anastasia Beverly Hills. And I'm creating some furrow lines on the forehead, just like the character. It will kind of age Jack a little bit. It will also make him a little bit more weather-worn and a little bit rougher looking. And don't be afraid to make these quite theatrical. Remember, if you're wearing this for Halloween, it's going to be quite dark by the time you go out. So if you want this to be visible, don't be afraid to go theatrical. So add some highlights and some shading and then do a lot of blending. Next I'm going in with this colour here from the Super Colour Palette. This is the perfect colour for a kind of aged blood look to the skin but if you blend it out it's a really good scar colour. So I'm laying down the colour first and then going in with a small blending brush to work that over the scar that we've applied using the Rigid Collodion. And then the result is one that looks like a scar. I'm going back to my Madrid palette by Krylon and I'm using the beige colour mixed with the grey tone and I'm using this around the mouth. This is helping to make the skin around this area look quite sallow, also a little bit ill looking and it's a really similar colour to the reference images that I'm using. We're also going to use this later to help sculpt the face and again make it look a bit more gaunt. I'm using the same cream colour that we used along the nose scar on the actual lips 
and straight away putting these in it makes them look really sore you can also see that they're quite deep and it's a really really quick and easy way to achieve the same effect that the characters have so this is a bit of a work in progress i tend to go back and forward between bits around the face so i'm applying some lighter areas around the mouth to make it look a bit more three dimensional and then i'm also applying some dark shadows around and filling in this part of the chin because one of the reference images that i'm working from has this deep area on the chin i'm going back to the eyeshadows now to sculpt around the cheeks to make the face look more gaunt if you want to see the power of what this can do to a round face, you need to check out my Disney Witch. I'm going to link it at the top of the screen now. It will literally blow your mind. I'm also taking that same shadow around the eyes and also around the scar. You can see it's really starting to give a bit more of a sickly finish to Jack's face. He looks a lot more sallow and it really does start to create more shape, but in a negative way, which is what we're trying to achieve. I'm also taking that around the forehead because it also helps to enhance the fake hairline. Then I'm going back to my Krylon palette and I'm taking the darkest shade and I'm applying that into the eye socket to start deepening this area. Once again I'm getting Jack to close his eyes and look up to stretch the skin so I can really apply this underneath the root of his lower eyelashes. Then I'm also putting this on top of the nose. But the key here is not to be neat about it, you want it to look slightly dishevelled and so that you can see a little bit of skin still peering through. I'm also taking this underneath the scars on both sides of the cheeks and again this is really going to start to draw the face in. A secondary gain to apply an eyeshadow over the cream is it's going to set it in place. On a fluffy angled brush I'm taking a little bit of those two colours underneath the jaw to enhance it and then also down the neck. Along the top of the scar, on this side, I'm applying some of that pinky tone so that you can really see that it's a scar when you're facing forward. And then I'm enhancing the shadow underneath and also down towards the chin. Again, this is really making the face look sunken. To enhance the ridge on the nose, I'm applying shadow around it. It makes it look more sunken. And then I'm enhancing this scarred area because it does look a little bit deeper, like a deeper cut in the reference image. And using my pointed brush, I'm also enhancing the shading around the mouth scars. Again, just to make them look a little bit more three-dimensional. That's what I love about these looks. When they're a work in progress, you just keep going backwards and forwards until you're happy with how intense these areas are. Now, these particular characters are not clean. They're out in the desert. They're getting dirty. They're getting dusty. So I want to break up the skin with some spackling and I'm going back to my Toby Sales palette I'm using the dust to dust shade with my Delium Tools splatter brush and I'm flicking this onto the skin to really break it up and as you can see it's really effective. I've done this in so many tutorials because it really does give a wonderful finish. Although I would recommend doing this with a glove if you've got nails because it does make them look a bit of a state. I'm now taking a maroon toned matte eyeshadow rather than a grease paint because a grease paint on the lips does tend to move whereas the eyeshadow kind of sticks a little bit to the skin and I'm applying this to the center of the lips. And that completes my War Boy Halloween makeup tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it. The transformation really was fun and as you can see it's super effective. I will try and list and link all the products I've used in the description bar. If you've got any suggestions for tutorials, leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to come follow me outside of YouTube over on Instagram, which is at Show Me Makeup, and I will see you next week. Bye, guys.